What's up friends and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna talk about the Oshwan Smart XR Gimbal by Peer Gear for creating smooth, stabilized footage. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry, my Chinese isn't that good, but I can at least count. I know with so many smartphones on the market, it isn't easy to find the right one, but hopefully with this review, you are able to make the right purchase decision for yourself. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. I will do a quick unpacking and show you an overview of the gimbal, talk about the build and design quality, balancing the gimbal and setting up the app. We're also going to look at the app itself and the intelligent modes that it offers, the different operating modes, the performance, where I will show you some sample footage, price and summary, where I will give my thoughts about this gimbal. A timestamp will be in the video description below if you wanna skip or go back to a particular part of the video. I also want to remind you to download the free iPhone filmmaking guide if you haven't. This guide will help you find the right tools to get started with smartphone filmmaking. All right, I'm gonna stop talking, let's get into the video. So here's a quick unboxing of the gimbal. In the package, you will receive a user manual and a storage pouch. You will also receive the Ochuan SmartX gimbal, a tripod, a Type-C USB charging cable, and a hand rope. Let's look at the gimbal and do a quick overview of it. You have a phone clip to mount your smartphone. There is also an available micro USB power output to charge your smartphone. You also have the roll, tilt, and pan axis, which can be locked. To the side, you will find the focus wheel. Below it, a zoom control lever to adjust zoom, an LED display that will show you the battery life and current operating modes, a joystick to adjust the position of the camera, a power button to turn on and off the gimbal, the shooting button to start and stop recording, and a camera parameter button to change shooting modes. To the side, you will also find a Type-C USB to charge the gimbal. At the very bottom, there is a one quarter thread mount to mount the included tripod or other accessories. Okay, let's look at the build and design of the gimbal. This gimbal feels solid and has a nice black design to it. It also has a rubber material right here that feels really nice and high quality. Now it's a good idea to use the included tripod so that you have a better grip of the gimbal. If you have large hands, a tripod might be too short, uh, which holding the gimbal with two hands could be difficult. Now, Peer Gear has also additionally sent me a grip that extends. This can be mounted to the bottom of the gimbal. This is great if you want to create a fake drone shot or simply use it as a selfie stick. Its size is really small and only weighs around 375 grams. Now, this gimbal can easily be transported since I can fold it and doesn't take up much space. Now this gimbal offers a payload of 250 grams. It works with lithium batteries and you can charge it using the Type-C USB. So the battery is actually replaceable, which allows you to have multiple batteries if you're planning on shooting longer. But in most cases, shooting eight hours should be more than enough. Now, if you don't wanna use additional batteries, you can always bring a power bank to charge the gimbal. It takes around two hours and 40 minutes to charge the gimbal fully. I like the idea that you are able to charge your smartphone through the micro USB output since shooting videos can drain the battery really quickly. So let me show you how to set up the gimbal and adjust the balance. First, unfold the gimbal until it snaps. Unlock all three axes for the motors to work. Pull open the phone clip and place your smartphone according to the phone's camera direction, which is indicated as shown. Level your smartphone with the ground to make sure it's balanced. This way the gimbal doesn't have to consume more power. Turn it on by long pressing the power button. You can now use the gimbal with the standard camera app, but keep in mind that you're limited. You can't, for example, use the focus wheel or start and stop recording uh, using the buttons on the gimbal. If you really wanna access all of the features, I recommend you using it with the AC Play app that you can download for free on the App Store. To do so, turn on Bluetooth and download AC Play from the store. The app is compatible with iOS and Android. Open AC Play and it will automatically search and connect to your gimbal. All right, let's now look at the AC Play app and the different intelligent modes it offers. So first of all, you can change your camera settings by tapping on this one, you can choose 4K uh, up to 60 frames per second. That is what I use most often because I wanna slow the footage down in post-production and 4K just has more detail. 
and is a higher resolution than 1080p. Next is the filter option. I don't use this, but if you want, you can like change the brightness and tone level. You also have filters where you can add different looks to your video. I'll leave it at original image. Selecting the gear icon will give you more option. Up here, you can set the timer for when it should start shooting. Uh, you can also activate flashlight and below are further settings for your camera. So you can choose different aspect ratios like one by one, four by three. I usually keep it at 16 by nine when I record videos horizontally. Uh, you can also enable horizontal line. Um, I leave that off. I keep uh, maximum brightness enabled this way, can view the screen better and see what's going on. You can also change the zoom speed. I usually max that out and let's head back, go back to settings. Um, you also have gimbal settings, which you are able to change the parameters of your gimbal. So you have tilt, pan, the joystick speed, and all of that, which I think is really great. Let's get back to the gear settings. You also have a grid, which I leave enabled. This way I can frame the subject better. Um, Anti-shake, so if you leave that off, you will see you have a wider field of view, but I leave that on. Uh, since it helps further stabilize the video. We also have the option to select manual mode if you want more control over your camera. There's also another way to enable manual mode by pressing the M button right here. So by enabling it, you will see below, I have different settings that I can change on my camera, but we're gonna look at that later. Lens selection allows me to select different lenses so I can use the telephoto, the ultra wide or the wide lens and i leave it at wide you have to be careful when using the ultra wide lens because the motors could appear in the frame um, depending on what phone you're using so let's look at the manual control i'm gonna press and hold m i will be given different option i have the exposure value which changes the exposure by sliding it over I usually leave this at zero. I can select shutter. Now, because I'm recording in 4K 60 frames per second, I will set it double my frame rate, which is one over 120. The ISO I keep as low as possible so I don't introduce any noise into my image. I can also set my white balance. I don't leave this at auto. I can use either one of the presets or put in my own value. I will set this to 5,500 Kelvin since uh, I'm filming in daylight. I can also adjust the focus. Usually I leave this in auto, but if I want to, I can manually control the focus using this slider, but I prefer using the wheel provided here. As you can see, as I turn it, I can set focus manually, which is pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this at auto for now. And I can also adjust the zoom. So if I slide this over, it will zoom in, but I can also control it with this lever right here. Now I wanna turn manual mode off because I wanna show you that you can also set your focus by tapping on the screen and locking it, but also set your exposure. This is also what most standard cameras have. So I can just tap on the screen and adjust the brightness, or I can tap and hold to lock the autofocus and exposure. So as you can see, it's great to have different options. You can either have full control over your camera or just have everything half automatic. On the upper right, I can switch between the front facing camera and back camera. I can also track a subject by creating a square around it and it will follow that subject. So if I move my gimbal, it will move accordingly. Also, when I use the front facing camera, I can turn on tracking and it will automatically detect my face. But as I move, it doesn't really move the gimbal. So you can also track the subject's face and it will start moving. 
And this is pretty great if you wanna vlog uh, since you don't have to worry about not being in the frame. Another cool feature is the gesture control. So I can select it, hold up two fingers, and it will start recording, which is pretty awesome. And at the bottom right, I can view all the footage taken, which will be saved onto my camera roll. To the very right side, I have different shooting modes. Um, one that I really like is the multi-lens shooting, which allows me to record uh, with multiple lenses. So I'm able to record with the front facing camera and with the back of the camera. And I can also choose different viewing options. I prefer this one since I have a 16 by nine perspective and I can also choose different lens. So for example, if I want to use the ultra wide angle lens, I can go for that or the telephoto lens. And this is similar to the double take app by Filmic Pro. The only downside to it is that you're only able to record in 24, 25 and 30 frames per second. So no slow motion. So you also have time-lapse mode, uh, slow motion. If you just wanna record slow motion internally, video, photo, uh, but also panorama. With the iPhone standard camera, I can also create a panorama by doing it handheld, but with the gimbal, I'm able to do it and it will do the panorama for me, giving me a super wide uh, image. So let's see how that will look like. Boom. So in the intelligent mode, I will be given different option. I can in choose inception, which uh, with one click will rotate the smartphone for me. Next will be the Alfred Hitchcock, which is a sort of vertigo effect that you can create, which enlarges the background or the subject, depending on the movement. And you also have a motion shot, which is basically a time-lapse you can create. And the great part is that you can set different reference points. So I can start shooting time-lapse here and I can select this. Then I can move the gimbal and select this as a reference point and move it all the way here and maybe downwards and select this as my third reference point. I can select the duration of, of the time-lapse and start the time-lapse. All right, so this was an overview of the AC Play app. Let's now look at the different operating modes. Okay, so we're now gonna look at the operating modes. With the joystick, you're not only able to move the camera, but also cycle through the different modes by pressing the joystick once. The display will indicate the current mode you're in. If you double press the joystick, it will return to its original position. The first mode is the pan follow mode, which is indicated as PF on the display. That is the mode I use least because the tilt is locked. Next is the full follow mode, which is indicated as F. This is what I use most often as it's great for following subjects. Next is the full lock mode, which is indicated as L. In this mode, all three motors are locked. This will allow your smartphone to stay in place. Next is POV mode, which is indicated as POV. This will allow you to get a first person view perspective. This will basically follow all of your movements since it uses all three axes. You could also use this mode to create a rotation effect or by by pressing the joystick three times to enter inception mode. In this mode, it will rotate the smartphone for you. Last, by press holding the joystick, you will enable mad dog mode, indicated as go, which is great for shooting fast moving subjects. Keep in mind that all of these modes also work with the standard camera app or any other video app like Filmic Pro. I was a little bit thirsty. So now I'll show you some footage samples that I took with the gimbal so that you can see how stable the footage actually is.
As you can see, the gimbal does a great job of stabilizing the footage and I had no problems operating the different modes while shooting. So the Ochuan Smart XR gimbal is priced at around $109. I think the Ochuan Smart XR gimbal is a great compact gimbal and pairing it with the AC Play app does give you advanced functionality. Being able to shoot manual mode is important to really have full control over your camera. If you plan on using a lens like I do, uh, which the ones I use are from Sandmark, depending on the size of the lens, you will have a difficult time balancing the gimbal since there is no current option to add counterweights. Because you want to make sure that the gimbal is balanced, otherwise it will drain the battery quite quickly. Now for filters, I think you can use them since they aren't so heavy, but again, be aware of the maximum payload. It would be great if it was more compatible with the standard camera or video apps like Filmic Pro since I use them very often. Otherwise, I think this is a great gimbal for those that want to capture smooth looking footage and use the special features that come with this app to capture videos creatively. So guys, hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about this gimbal, make sure to subscribe if you're new to this channel. This way I can create more awesome tutorials for you guys. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Bennett Grazer. And if you're looking for more smartphone filmmaking tutorials, make sure to check out these two videos that you'll certainly not regret. And I will see you in the next video.